Free energy from centrifugal force. Today we will discuss two methods of obtaining overunity using centrifugal force as the accelerator. First category, implosion motors. Second category, a spinning weight or a pendulum. Centrifugal force can be thought of as pressure on the center shaft. We want to turn the pressure into work but we do not want to disturb the rotation of the spinning mass. We must make a compromise. We must sacrifice a small portion of our perfect circular motion to gain acceleration. Implosion motors. Moving weights can get expensive in terms of cost of parts and manufacturing, but they can also get very in expensive in terms of mechanical losses. One method of free energy from centrifugal force is to use spinning water as a weight and water jets as a method of acceleration. These me machines can be built cheaply and do not require a lot of moving parts. Because the motion of the water creates vacuum pressure, they are called implosion motors. Victor Chabrige is famous for implosion, well, implosion technology, not just implosion motors, and called some of his machines a repul sign. Now, I don't know German, so I don't know exactly which ones are repul signs and which ones are not. Okay, so here you have a driving shaft in water and water is forced up through the pipes and it spiraled outwards and uh, the toothed wheel is what the water pushes against much like a rotating lawn sprinkler uh, he built a home power generator and uh, Chabrier's designs were overly complicated the complexity of his design had a purpose, but the design does not need to be that complicated to work to produce free energy. All that is needed is a spinning drum full of water with jets on the outside, so that, so that as the water jets out, it accelerates the drum and sucks more water into the drum. If water spins both radially and axially, it becomes highly diamagnetic and repels the earth. This is a type of anti-gravity. If you would like more information on implosion motors or anti-gravity, on implosion motors or anti-gravity technology, technology, contact widths or visit the website. Okay, so this is the inside of his home power generator. Um, rotor vanes for the water jets to push against can be seen around the inside circumference. So you do not need this spiraling here. You can just have a drum with water in it. And they were trying to do the spiral design. Some links here. Um, some of Chabergé's work. Everything he made was spirally. It's obsessed. Um, let's go back up. Um, I want to make a note and say that um, the speed of these machines can be regulated by a pressure relief valve, much like So if the pressure gets too much, then it just squirts out the water, say at the top, and it doesn't uh, push it out on the jet on the side. Um, so again, you can just have a drum of water with jets on it. Okay.
uh, spinning weight or pendulum. The most common form of this technology is called the two-stage oscillator. This was invented by Veljiko Milkovic. Okay. So it's basically a seesaw with a pendulum on it. And usually they put in a spring. This design uses a pendulum. It harnesses the force of gravity and centrifugal force together. Centrifugal force can be thought of as pressure on the center pivot. The pressure can be turned into mechanical energy. The trick is to have the weight not move very much from the center. Okay, so this seesaw here, it rocks back and forth way too much. You're going to lose all your momentum. The trick is to have the weight not move very much from the center. Our head 100 on YouTube has stated that the weight should not move more than 10% of the radius of the weight. However, I believe that that is too much. The amount of movement should be as small as possible so the weight does not slow down. Uh, one eighth of an inch on a 15 inch radius would be appropriate. Uh, now you don't need a pendulum. You can just have a spinning weight. It's the same thing. My word is a terrible program. Uh, Pavel Neem's linear force generator using sliders. So he has a spinning weight and it slides back and forth. And it looks like he's trying to run an air compressor here. Or maybe it's hydraulic. Uh, it's not very efficient output. Um, what he needs is something like this. Oscillating motion can be converted to rotational motion using a double ratcheting or double sprag mechanism. Uh, here's a double sprag mechanism that I made. Double sprag mechanism. Sprags, one-way bearings, or ramp roller clutches are used in automatic transmissions. Now, they're expensive to buy, but automatic transmissions used are cheap, so they don't work. Or their cars are no good. Transmission's fine. That's what I mean. Uh, cars don't last very long here, they rest out. There are two other ways of harnessing centrifugal force. The next one discussed is limited by gravity, so its power output is limited. A weight moves out from the center of the axis, and gravity bring, brings it back in. So the previous one, the axis moved with the weight. So the, the pivot of the weight moves with the weight. See here. Uh, and now you can have the weight move in and out a little bit. You have to be careful with it. So you can see that the centrifugal force is a force from the center outward. And half of the rotation gravity adds to that force. And half of the rotation uh, gravity subtracts from that force. So you can use gravity to help bring your weight back in. And then gravity and centrifugal force help bring it out because if you have a wheel with multiple weights all the weights are moving at the same speed so they have the same amount of centrifugal force so you use gravity to help bring them back in. The weight moves out from the center of the axis uh, well, from the center axis and gravity brings it back in so as the weight moves out you want to harness that energy so you want to set it up like if the weight cannot move out, then it doesn't do any work. But if it moves out, it does work. That performs work. So it like accelerates the wheel as it comes out. There is a third method which is more difficult to set up. A weight moves in a circle and pulls a rod almost tangential to its velocity. And this method may not be suitable for a free energy machine because it, uh, it may slow 
the weight down substantially. So basically, if you have a weight and you think if there's something sort of pulling it in as it turns in a circle, and if you set it up so that uh, if it if it goes inward, it doesn't do any work, but if it stays rotating in the same uh, same radius, then it has to do work. Third, third method concept illustrated. So, this video. Okay, so um, this would work if it's set up right and it had a spring. And this video, uh, this is, uh, it has a hidden motor, but it would work if it had a spring and a bigger weight. And I think the axes need to be closer together. Uh, okay, here the pivot of the linkage rod is too far from the center pivot. The weight should not move very much from the center pivot. So when that weight moves in and out from the center, you lose a lot of energy. Ron Brandt built a machine like this after seeing Timothy Thrapp's gravity motors. Ron's weight was about two inches round and two inches long, so uh, it's 1.8 pounds, and the machine was nine inches in diameter. The device required a spring and proper tuning. Uh, it sat on a desk, and once it was started, it spun at two to 300 RPM. Ron tried to get it to work without the spring, but was unsuccessful. And uh, Ron thought, you know, well, it's kind of useless, but, uh, you know, Ron, uh, uh, he built uh, huge free energy systems. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, you can download this PDF and read it yourself. Uh, implosion motors are like a huge thing. You can build them basically you know, infinite number of waves. Uh, they can be built like a turbine or they can be made simpler. Again, if you need help with uh, your uh, flying saucer technology uh, or implosion motors or any other free energy technology, contact WITS, World Improvements Through the Spirits Ministries, Ministries. Okay, so I hope this helps. Please leave a comment. Uh, comment, like, dislike, <laughs> subscribe or unsubscribe.